Hello, I'm Ty Mason of the DiabetesCouncil.com, researcher, writer, and I have type 2 diabetes. I want to emphasize that my perspective is coming from one with type 2 and not type 1. Our channel is primarily for those with type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes. Today, I want to answer the question, what is the best cooking oil for type 2 diabetes? After you watch the video today, I invite you to check out the description box for my new ebook. This is one of the most comprehensive diabetes meal planning books you'll find anywhere. It contains diabetes friendly meals and recipes, recipes for different goals such as 800 to 1800 calories per day meal plans, diabetes meal planning tips and tricks. There are also tons of diabetes friendly recipes for everyone. A walk down the banking aisle of your local grocery store may reveal as many as 130 bottles of cooking oil. Besides the veritable sea of oils, corn flour, sunflower, corn, olive, canola, vegetable, there are also a variety of sprays and multiple brands of shortening. Now this is a lot of choices. How do you make the right one? Well, I can't tell you what oil is best for you, so I decided to give you a few things to consider when choosing the right cooking oil for your pantry. The first factor is the amount of fat. Despite its bad reputation, fat, especially in the form of oils derived from is okay to eat now and then. The right fats and oils can contribute to a strong immune system and are needed for the absorption of the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. Eating some fat can even increase the absorption of lycopene and beta-carotene, disease-fighting antioxidants found in fruits and vegetables. Researchers at Ohio State University put fat to the test by measuring the nutritional impact of dressing on a garden salad. They used three dressings with varying amounts of fat, 0 grams, 6 grams, and 28 grams. When consumed, the fat-free dressing allowed almost no nutrient absorption. Absorption increased with the low-fat dressing and was substantially higher with the full fat. The bottom line? Adding some healthful fats and oils to each meal, even in the cooking environment, can have a positive impact on the amount of nutrients your body absorbs and your overall health. As always, the key, moderation. You shouldn't cook every food in oil or pour it on every dish. But some oil every day is important for a well-balanced nutrition. You should shoot for four to six fat servings a day. Each fat serving translates to about 45 calories for a total of about 180 to 300 calories per day. Keep track of those fats you consume because they can be tricky. You should count those that occur in foods as well as in the recipe during cooking. The second factor I looked at was types of fat. You see, all cooking oils provide about the same 14 grams of total fat, 120 calories per tablespoon, not all, but most. They differ, however, in the proportions of saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fats. Saturated fats, these tend to raise the LDL, or bad cholesterol levels, and may increase insulin resistance so it's best to limit their intake. High quantities of saturated fats are found in animal fats, such as lard and butter, and tropical oils, such as coconut and palm oil. Oils that are lowest in unhealthful saturated fats include canola oil, safflower oil, black seed oil. There's also monounsaturated fats. Now, these decrease risk of heart disease, and some small studies suggest such fats may reduce insulin resistance. Heart-healthy examples include olive oil, safflower oil, and canola oil. Polyunsaturated fats. These are the omega-3 fats. A type of polyunsaturated fat are thought to protect the heart and enhance cognitive and behavioral development in children. Oils high in healthful omega-3s are flaxseed oil, canola oil, and soybean oil. In addition, research from the University of Colorado hints that eating a high diet of omega-3s may help keep high-risk children from developing type 1 diabetes. 
This may be due to the anti-inflammatory action of these fats, but further study is really needed. The bottom line, overall, olive and canola oils are the best picks for everyday cooking. Canola oil can take the most heat. Extra virgin olive oil has more flavor, but may burn at high temperatures. Factor number three is flavor. If you want oil to boost the flavor of what you're cooking, then think about sesame oil, walnut oil, extra virgin olive oil, oils that are flavored with garlic, basil, rosemary, and the like. For little to no impact of flavor, which is ideal for baking, choose canola oil, safflower oil, or pure or light olive oil. Factor number four, shelf life. Those oils don't stay for a good forever. Keep your cooking oils tightly covered and away from the light and heat. Although different oils stay fresh for different lengths of time, whether the bottle has been opened definitely affects its shelf life. An unopened bottle of oil lasts about a year or longer. Open bottles of oil, around six months. Now, you can put some oils in the refrigerator and extend their shelf life. The final factor I looked at was heat tolerance. If you're going to cook with an oil, how, how much heat can it take? Now, for high heat applications, such as sautéing or grilling or wok cooking, deep fat frying, you choose an oil with a high smoke point. The smoke point is the temperature to which an oil can be heated before it starts to smoke, obviously, discolor or break down. Now, oils with high smoke points uh, around 400 to 450 degrees, canola and oil. Oils with low smoke points, well, extra virgin olive oil and flaxseed oil. The one oil that's intolerant of heat is flaxseed. When exposed to heat, flaxseed oil breaks down and burns. So save flaxseed oil for no-cook recipes such as salad dressings. There's a chart that shows you the smoke points of most of the more common oils on the screen right now. Again, as I said earlier, you can make your oil last longer in the refrigerator sometimes three to six months longer. Though some may turn cloudy and thick when chilled, they normally return to normal after a few minutes at room temperature. Walnut, flaxseed, and sesame oils are especially delicate and prone to rancidity, so be sure to store them in your refrigerator. Well, I know I probably didn't answer your question, and there's a whole lot more oils out there than what I was able to do in this short video, but as many of you know, many times I just give you information and you choose what's best for you based on the factors I've given. This is another case where individual preference is key, not me telling you what to use. Don't forget to check out my new ebook and please subscribe to our channel for many more videos like this one in the future. I want to thank you so much for watching. I'm Ty Mason.